All right, uh, hello and welcome to the 13th video um, in the APES lecture series. This one is going to talk about TFR a little bit more in detail and why we see the differences in TFR that we mentioned in the last video. Um, so just kind of as a refresher, total fertility rate is the average number of children born uh, for the average woman. And so in a developed country, we see a pretty low number on a, across the board, 1.5 children per woman. And in developing countries, it's much higher uh, and close to four children per woman. And so why do we see these differences and what causes them? There are a couple of things that affect it. One of the biggest ones is education. And so this um, chart here is showing the countries in Africa and how education affects the uh, average TFR. And so if you look at it, uh, this column here is the total TFR for the country. So what does everybody in that country look like? And then they split it up by education level. Um, so the column after that is no education. And so we're just looking at Benin here, the first one on the list. Um, we see that no education TFR on average, each of those women that have no formal education are having seven children. Seven kids is an awful lot, right? It's a really high TFR. Compare that to those women that go to primary school in Benin and that number drops to 5.0. Um, and then if they go to secondary or higher, so something like high school or, or upper school, this would be our TFR. So you can see just how drastic of a drop it is in this one single example here. This falls through for uh, all these countries on this list. You can look through any of them um, and you'll see that TFR drop due to education. So education is one that plays a really important role uh, for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is uh, by going to school, you're typically going to see that child not being married as earlier. Uh, marriage usually kind of is the beginning of the childbearing years for a girl. And so by going to secondary school, a lot of these developing countries where the kids may be getting married at 14, 15, 16 years old, um, if they're going to secondary school, that kind of pushes back that first marriage date. It also gives them um, a opportunity at a job, right? If the the girl is able to secure a job or secure a skill through education, uh, much less likely to have kids because what can't you do if you're spending all your time raising kids? Well, you can't work uh, at your job. And so getting a job is another kind of factor uh, why we see that TFR drop. Um, and it's due to this education. Again, here's kind of all that data put onto a graph and you can see this negative correlation that as the number of girls, percentage of girls enrolled in school increases, you see a significant drop in the total fertility rate, right? There's a really strong negative correlation here. Uh, a couple of the top countries and a couple of the bottom countries. So this um, set of data comes from 185 countries, so not every country is on the list, but I pulled the top five off for you here, Japan, Spain, Iran, Georgia, and the UK in terms of primary school enrollment for uh, females, and you can see their corresponding TFRs are extremely low. Uh, the bottom five is kind of the opposite deal here, right? We've got really poor primary school enrollment, less than 50% for some of them, right around 50% for the others. The TFRs that my face is blocking, this one is a 3.9 for Djibouti, 4.2 for Sudan, and 4.6 uh, for Eritrea. All right, so you see kind of that large difference. I also put the United States on here. Uh, United States fell at 92 overall on this list with a primary school enrollment of 92%, and the TFR in the United States is 2.1, so right at um, replacement fertility rate for us. But kind of shocking that we're so low on this list in terms of primary school enrollment. All right, so some other factors that influence the total fertility rate. One of them is this cost of raising and educating children. In a developed country, this is extremely high, right? Think about all the things that your parents are spending money on for you, right? Education is one. Uh, a lot of you may have a car that you drive, the clothes that you wear, um, just kind of the experiences going to Disney World, all that kind of stuff. Uh, is the cost of raising and educating the child and it is extremely high in developed countries when comparing them to developing countries. And so if the cost is really high in a developed country, you're going to have less children uh, to try to save on some of those costs. You simply can't afford to have multiple or lots of children. 
Um, availability of a pension system is another one. If we're talking about uh, the pension system, if there is none, right, like a developing country would not have the stability to have a functioning pension system. If you have no pension system, then you typically see a TFR that is very high. Um, and the reason for that is these individuals in these countries are going to need some sort of security later in life, right? So the pension system in the United States works like um, this. After you retire, people that are currently in the workforce are paying money to Social Security. If you are um, past that age where you can collect Social Security checks, then you're kind of being supported by all the other workers of that country. Without that option, if you do not have a pension system, it's kind of up to you to have either saved uh, enough money to be able to retire uh, healthily and happily, or you are continue to work until you absolutely cannot do so. And at that point, you're stuck relying on your kids. And so if you know there's no pension system and kind of no government support waiting for you at the end of your work career, um, you're going to have to rely on having the kids that would still be in the workforce that would support you, right? Um, everyone wants to be able to provide for their parents. The more kids that you have, in this instance, the better chance you have of somebody being able to support you, right? You might have eight kids, but seven of them might be bums and not working. So you're kind of counting on that eighth one or that final one to kind of help you uh, get through it and live a, a happy life until the end. Another big part here is children part of the, the workforce or the labor force. This is really big in rural regions, uh, much less so in urban centers, but in rural regions, many hands make light work, right? So if I own a farm and I'm farming um, palm oil in Indonesia, it makes sense for me to have a whole bunch of kids because I can put those kids to work as soon as uh, they're big enough or responsible enough. And then that's kind of free labor for me. Um, it could be something like carrying water in Sub-Saharan Africa here, where the parents can go to work for the day and uh, they can count on their kid to go down to um, the pump, the water pump, the communal water pump, and bring enough water back to, to make it through to the next day. So children as part of the labor force is a big influence upwards on TFR. If, if the kids are required to work to provide for the family, um, you see that TFR really shoot up, especially in uh, rural regions uh, outside of the city centers. Some other big things that affect um, the fertility rate. One of those things would be um, the age at marriage, like I mentioned before, that also plays in with women's education. Another big thing is kind of religious beliefs. There are some religions in the world that um, focus on early marriages, right, and see the woman as kind of this role of uh, bearing offspring and the man is the role of providing for the family and so these very traditional religious beliefs can affect the the TFR upwards along with religious beliefs also comes uh, the availability and use of birth control and birth control is something that can reduce the amount of birth rate it gives the, the choice to the parents on whether they're they want to have kids or not and uh, if your religious beliefs or your country's religious beliefs are against birth control, it may not be available. And there, so there are a lot of countries where birth control is not available. And so you get a lot of kind of accidental pregnancies, which do play in, a role in increasing the TFR. Um, a couple of the other important ones are infant deaths. If there are a lot of infant deaths, like we have a pretty high IMR, infant mortality rate, in Sub-Saharan Africa, those infant deaths increase the TFR because if uh, one out of every five kids does not survive uh, through childhood, then having more children kind of ensures that, that one of them will come through. Uh, this graph here is kind of showing our developed regions versus the less developed regions in terms of like a woman's uh, life events. And so we, we see that uh, the first birth it's very delayed in the developed regions. And if you think about where school usually comes into play here, right, we are in school in developed countries from before age 10. If you go all the way through college, probably about until age 21, 22, over here, 23. And then uh, you kind of get your feet together, get in your job, get your, focused on your career before you end up um, having that first kid. So the average age here is about 30 years old in a developed region. In a non-developed region, uh, that 
primary education, secondary education may not exist at all. And so some first births, you can see how early this one is here for our first birth. That's probably like 18 uh, to 19 years old on average. That has a much larger range for there's a much larger range for these childbearing years, right? If you're having your first birth at 18, uh, and then biologically you have another 20 years worth of reproductively viable years where you can produce healthy offspring. And so you might have uh, your first kid here at 18, um, and you might have your second kid here right after 20 years old. You could have a third kid here, right? So spacing them out, the nine months apart, uh, plus a little bit extra, um, you could fit in a whole bunch of children in this one lifespan of a woman and uh, kind of have those kids to help work at the farm or have those kids to help provide for you later in life once you can no longer work. Um, versus the developed country where if your first kid's at age 30, you only have 10 to 12 years, 10 to 15 years left where uh, you can have successful children. And so by shrinking that uh, amount of time, um, it really lowers the TFR in the developed countries. Some big takeaways here, right? We have a huge amount of growth in developing countries, right? 97% of the growth happens in the developing countries, and it's due to those two reasons, right? We have really high birth rates, um, and that could be for any of those reasons I just went over. And we also have very young populations. And so we'll see some figures on these, some age structure diagrams of these developing countries. And they have very, very wide regions or very wide bases of young populations, which means a lot more people in their reproductive years. Compare that to a developed country, right? The average number of births barely exceeds the deaths because we've got much older populations, right? Healthcare is a lot better, so people are living longer, uh, well beyond their reproductive years. And so these old people can't reproduce, they still count for population, um, and it kind of lowers that uh, amount of births um, that we could have in those countries. And this is where I'm gonna leave off for this video. The next one we'll get into death rates and infant mortality rates, life expectancy. So thank you for watching. Please come with some sort of notes uh, prepared to discuss tomorrow. Thank you.